talk about the structure and stereochemistry of alkanes. This is a big chapter in organic chemistry. We're going to learn how to name molecules, and then we're going to learn um, a little bit about the structure of them, the specific rotations and things of that nature. So there's two classifications of hydrocarbons. The first type that we can have is a saturated hydrocarbon. Those are going to contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms possible. Really what this means for us is that there's no double or triple bonds present in the molecule. That's what we're going to be dealing with in, um, in this chapter and really up until the next few chapters. So we won't get into unsaturated until we start talking about alkenes. So unsaturated, they do not contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. These simply are going to have double bonds and or triple bonds present. Now there's a predictable pattern in alkanes. So the pattern of carbons to hydrogens, it has a, a, a pattern of Cn H2N plus 2. And they're all going to have single bonds. So if we have a C2, then we would have an H, right, 2 times 2 plus 2, which is a C2H6. And then the structure of that we can figure out pretty easily. And we're going to start recognizing these patterns. And we're not going to be counting up valence electrons, for example. Well, we know that the two carbons are attached to each other. And then we put H's on both ends. And there you have it. Now, we're going to learn how to name this thing in just a minute. And then we're going to talk about its structure later on during this lecture series. All right. Now, as far as naming them, there are two types of chemical names. The first one is the common name. Common names are historical names, and they arise often from common usage. Acetic acid, for example, is a common name. Right? The IUPAC, or the systematic name of this, is ethanoic acid. So most are not um, systematic. Many of them are based on original source of the compound. Um, but because they've been used so widely, everyone calls ethanoic acid acetic acid. It's just... It's just been absorbed into kind of the regular language of organic chemistry. So um, many are widely used, and we can see some less common kind of common names down here below. Let's look at the isomers of C5H12. So if we have five carbons in a row, we can connect them all together in a straight line. That would give us something called pentane. Notice here that pent means five. Right, and then the A-N-E ending means that you have an alkane. So there's pentane. Now the other arrangements are isopentane and neopentane. And those you should kind of be familiar with. But that's just for a molecule that has three isomers. So if we had to know common names of um, atoms that had more than three isomers, you could see it could be very tricky fairly quickly. Like, look down here below. If you just had 10 carbons, you have 75 different isomers. So no one's going to memorize 75 different names of, of a molecule for different isomers of a C10H22. So because of that, and because of the growing field of OCHEM, um, the IUPAC system was developed. So this is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So basically, chemists got together and came up with a set of rules that we're going to learn. So we have the common names, and now we're going to talk about the IUPAC names. Now, in the IUPAC system for naming, there's two parts. The first part is your parent name. It's a prefix that indicates the number of carbons in the longest carbon chain. Before, in that last example, we said pent. Right? Pent was for five. And then there's going to be an ending, a suffix. Now that ending will indicate the most important functional group in the compound. Now, as we get into more complicated examples, sometimes molecules can have more than one functional group, and then we have to learn who's the most important. That's a separate topic. 
For now, we're going to learn how to name just alkane. So they're all going to have an ending of A and E. So there's a table here, and you really have to have this memorized. We're going to use it so much that it's just going to become you know, common language for you, really. So if we have one carbon, the base name of that is meth. Right? And if it's an alkane, we would call it a methane molecule. And it has the formula here. It's kind of a weird way of writing it, but it is the same as a CH4. And don't worry about this last column for right now. Okay. So if you have two, then it's called eth. Right? Three is prop, four is bute, five is pent, six is hex, hept, right? oct, known, deck, undecane, dodecane, tridecane, um, up to 13. And you can look at this, There's, they go from 14 to 20 up into the 30s, but we're just not going to see molecules that are really that long in our uh, OCHEM class. All right. Now, this substituent group name is something that we're going to have to kind of address as we go through uh, molecules that have um, branches. So it turns out that we can have a molecule, like if you look back at that pentane. Pentane was this. Right? We also said we could have this isomer, and we noted that we could have that isomer. So there are three isomers. Now, when we look at this, of course, that's just in one long carbon chain. Down here below, though, we have this kind of carbon chain here with this little guy hanging out up here. And that, in OCHEM, is called a substituent. It's a branch off of our longest carbon chain. Down here below, our, long, our longest carbon chain here is this guy. And in this case, we have two substituents. Now, that substituent here is just one carbon, right? So one carbon has a base name of meth. But as a substituent, we don't add the suffix A and E. We add the suffix YL. So one carbon is a methyl. And here we have two methyls, right? So if we have two methyls, we call them dimethyls. So pretty straightforward, but that's kind of the, the idea there. Now, let's practice some examples. There's going to be some rules here. So as far as naming these things, the first thing that we want to do here is we want to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. Right? We're going to number the carbons to get the base name. And then we're going to add, in this case, A and E to get the compound name. So when we look at this molecule, this first molecule, I think we can all see pretty easily that that is going to be your longest carbon chain, right? We have one, two, three, four, five carbons. If we numbered going down this way, then that would be four, right? So you'd have a four carbon chain or a five carbon chain. So that's not good. We want five carbons. So the parent name of something with five carbons is pent, and the suffix is ane. And there we have it, pentane. Now that's not the full name of this molecule because we have something sticking off of us right here. We have a, a methyl group off of this. In fact, it's at carbon number three. So this would be three methyl pentane. And we're gonna get to that in a second. So we're gonna get to this um, naming of substituents in just a second. Our first goal right now, though, is just simply to find the longest carbon chain. Now, in Oakham, we love to give you molecules that have um, a long carbon chain that's not going from the left to the right. So when we look at this carbon chain, you might say, okay, well, look at this. That has four carbons. That's my longest carbon chain. But nope, it's not. Our longest carbon chain starts up here at the top, comes down, comes over, down this direction, up and over like that. So that is our longest carbon chain, right? Counting them up, we have one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is hept, and there's no double bonds or anything else in here, so it's heptane. So our first goal again is to find this. Now, as we go through this, and, and, and we'll kind of throw in some additional things to consider, what if there's a tie in the chain length? And this happens from time to time. So let's take a look at this example down below. How do we get a tie in our chain length? Well, let's start off at the top here. So we're going to start off up here and count. We're going to come down this direction. We're going to move down here. And at this point, 
we could come down here like this. Right, that's one kind of carbon chain there. Or we could come down here like this and go this direction. So let's count it up. Let's see what the number of carbons are here. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here I'm getting a hept. Let's try it over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's another hept. Now, one of the things for the IUPAC rules is that um, a, a name of a molecule needs to be unique. So no matter what the molecule is, we should all name it the same way. So if there is a tie, then the chain with more substituents wins. Now remember, substituents are just the things that are sticking off of our, of our parent chain. So if we count them up on this side, let's take a look. So looking at this first structure here, we have one substituent, that's one. Here's two. We have three over here and this big old thing here is also a, sub, a substituent. So this has four substituents. All right, over here we have one, two, and then this thing, even though it has these, like these two groups that are here, that's just one thing. So that's a substituent, so that's three. So this has three substituents. So in that case, what it means is that we want to use this numbering right for our parent as far as our backbone is concerned. That's our parent chain there. Okay. So again, rule number one, find the longest carbon chain.